my Air Force uh, administrative training down in San Antonio, Texas. And uh, having graduated the first in my class, you always got a choice assignment. So fortunately, it was to the Pentagon where I would later meet my wife and and, uh, and then we, we began our journey together. So I served at the highest level of Air Force intelligence, and I was the first African-American to do that in the military. So uh, that was in 1968, uh, and I was there to 1972. Uh, no, excuse me, 1971. Then we uh, transferred to San Bernardino, California, where I served a year. And then after that, it was time for Vietnam service. So after my Vietnam service, I came right back to the Pentagon. They say, once you've been here, you can't get away. They keep bringing you back. So they brought me back. And uh, once again, I worked uh, in Air Force Intelligence, uh, the office that I had left, and uh, stayed there until uh, I graduated with a, uh, went to bootstrap, Air Force sent me to college, mm -hmm. and I graduated uh, from Upper Iowa University and uh, uh, became a military commander for the next 18 years or so. Uh, had an opportunity to serve as a commander in, in uh, Georgia, mm -hmm. Guam, uh, Panama, and uh, various other places around the United States. Uh, I was the uh, director for real estate property for Washington, D.C., for the United States Air Force, Air Force District of Washington, and I also had an opportunity to serve as the uh, executive officer to the general and uh, then to uh, be the director of administration for the Air Force District of Washington. And I also served as the commander for the headquarters commander for uh, uh, 89th Military Airlift Wing, which is Air Force One uh, wing on Andrews Air Force Base. So I had a very happy career, very lucrative career. I, I closed it out by serving uh, down in uh, Panama as uh, part of President Clinton's anti-drug team where I was the Air Force Joint Task Force Commander traveling throughout South America and visiting places, nice places like uh, Colombia and, and El Salvador and mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, uh, other places that uh, we could land and, and do what the mission was. Uh, and then uh, finished out my military career in, uh, in, in, in Dover Air Force Base, uh, Delaware, where I was, was a flight commander and uh, Pretty much had a nice 30-year career. Uh, received the highest level. Which, uh, my highest level was the Joint Service Commendation Medal, mm -hmm. and many, many uh, other uh, commendation medals and meritorious service medals along the way. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Okay. And now I'm a civilian. So um, can you tell us what the mission of the Prince George County Commission for Veterans is? The uh, mission for the uh, Office of Veteran Affairs, uh, and oftentimes people mix it up, uh, we have a Office of Veteran Affairs, which uh, works alongside uh, with the Commission for Veterans. Uh, and the Office of Veteran Affairs is a, uh, uh, a, a, an office that was uh, created to serve the needs uh, 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 for, the, uh, uh, for the veterans throughout Prince George's County. Uh, we also serve, and uh, I've adapted to a new mission, which is to not only serve our veterans, but also to serve uh, their families, uh, because families are part of the military mission as well. Uh, we're now looking at uh, how can we help in a greater way uh, our active duty members in the county, as well as reservists and guard guard members. So uh, we have a, a very, very uh, a big task. Uh, and uh, we handle everything from uh, VA claims and uh, and uh, to uh, surviving spouse initiatives to uh, mental health issues to uh, other family issues that come our way. But our, our, our sole mission as county executive also, Brooks, uh, likes to say, is to serve the needs of our veterans and their families. Great. Um, so what are some of the challenges that veterans face in our local and national communities? Let me also say before we go further, the commission sure. is, a, is a great arm to work with me because the, the commission for veterans, is they're the ones that go out to the community and talk to mm -hmm. the residents and visit the uh, community-based military organizations to find out what, what, are, what some of the needs are and then they bring them back to me and then I address those as well. Uh, what are some of the major challenges that uh, veterans face in our local and national communities? 
uh, right now uh, it is COVID nineteen, mm -hmm. and uh, how do we get the services? Uh, how do we uh, how do we uh, act together to make sure that everyone knows that uh, they must uh, practice safety at all times? Mm -hmm. One of the biggest challenges for many veterans, especially our world, our, our, our Vietnam veterans, is uh, to get the uh, claims that they're entitled to. Uh, as we know, Agent Orange was a uh, chemical that was used in Vietnam, uh, in Thailand, and, uh, uh, and and in Korea uh, to kill the foliage uh, around the uh, military uh, installations and in the jungles. Uh, unfortunately, uh, that uh, Agent Orange is linked to uh, a cancer-causing agent. And what we do is uh, we help veterans to pursue their uh, their VA claims, although we don't do it personally. We work with organizations like the VFW, uh, veteran, Veterans of Foreign War, uh, Disabled Veterans, and National Association of Black Veterans, uh, who are the VSO, Veteran Service Officers, uh, that can help them uh, to pr pursue their claims. And we're seeing more and more veterans come in every day. Mm -hmm. Last year, we uh, we handled approximately 4,000 veterans. And then this, this year, uh, we're on task to do the same. And if it hadn't been for the virus, I think we, did, we would have doubled that number because people now know we're here. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the challenges is, is, is letting veterans know that there's an opportunity to get benefits. On the other side of the coin, uh, mental health challenges. Mm -hmm. During this time of COVID-19, we are also uh, concerned about those uh, veterans with PTSD. Mm -hmm. uh, Post-traumatic stress uh, disorder is something that affects many of our veterans. And in that case, we want to make sure as they're sitting at home that they don't get depressed, that they have no one to talk to, and that the services are available to them to be able to uh, get the help they need at any, any given time. Now, we also work with our Veterans Collaborative in a great way. Uh, the Veterans Collaborative, uh, we call it Serving Together, because Serving Together uh, is an organization that helps veterans when they need help as well, but they're very closely related to our office. Uh, many veterans, whether they're here or transitioning to Prince George's County or transitioning from the military, want to know more about the environment that they're going to be settling in. So the uh, collaborative uh, has a great database that is used to refer those veterans to the, to the resources that they can go to to get the assistance that they need. We are quite naturally one of those resources, but there are others extensively placed throughout the county and the state. So uh, they do a great job. We're very happy to be part of them. Uh, 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 Jennifer Watson does a super job. Also, Easter Seals is in there, and uh, and, uh, and and other organizations, businesses, nonprofits, community-based military organizations, all working together to make a difference here in the community. Um, what would you say are some of the most and uh, I just see oh the hashtag there serving yeah, together we'll put, we'll put uh, project dot org backslash or is it forward slash collaborative. Prince George's County uh, Veterans Collaborative, but I tell you what, uh, if you need help, they're good of places to go to because they have a, 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 a huge database of resources, and I'm very happy to be a part of them. Um, military and veteran families are about more than just the service men member, which you said. Um, what resources exist for family members who, of veterans who might be looking for better ways to support their veteran? Yeah. Military and veteran families are about more than just the uh, service members. That's exactly right. Uh, what what resources is this for families, members, and veterans who might uh, be looking for ways to, to better support their vet, their veterans? I hope you can still hear me. Uh, but at the same time, uh, as I said earlier, we work with uh, military veterans, their families, active duty, reservists, and guard guard members. Uh, many of the uh, veterans, uh, the, the spouses and the family members that come to us have questions about education. Mm -hmm. And we're happy to help them uh, with, uh, with uh, the resources available in Prince George's County when it comes to, to, to education uh, resources like Prince George's Community College, uh, University of Maryland, and the benefits that they may uh, uh, enjoy to be able to take classes at any one of our great institutions in Prince George's County. Uh, family members also come to us, unfortunately, after their spouses have passed away, mm -hmm. and they do not know the process to go through to be able to get the benefits that they so richly deserve. So uh, we have created 
a surviving spouse initiative just for the uh, spouse and families to help uh, walk them through uh, the uh, process when a, uh, a, a service member is deceased. So we do anything that we can possibly do uh, for our families when they come in to see us. I've had family members that come in and say, well, my grandfather needs help. He's a World War II veteran. Where do I get aid and attendance for a family member? Aid and attendance is a program where the VA will provide service, uh, uh, will provide funds for a, uh, a, a care provider for a, uh, a, a veteran who is over 65 and uh, has uh, is experienced in certain conditions. Uh, we've also helped families uh, when they have disabled uh, veterans living in the house. The family member calls and says, is there a way we can get help with uh, uh, constructing a, uh, a, a handicap accessible mm-hmm. environment? And we work with VA and, and others to help do that. So we do a lot of things for our families uh, throughout, uh, throughout Prince George's County. Great. Prince George's County has the largest number of veterans in the state of Maryland. And having the largest number uh, of veterans, 60,000 plus, uh, and let me say, it's important that we all fill out the census uh, 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 when it comes to you or online. Uh, having 60,000 veterans is a, is a big order. Uh, we have an uh, office of uh, th- really three people, and uh, we handle everything uh, that you can imagine. So uh, with uh, being the largest, uh, 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 having the largest concentration of veterans in the state of Maryland, uh, we, 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 we recognize all their needs, but at the same time, we recognize the, we, the needs of uh, women veterans. We have uh, created a women's veterans initiative uh, so that we can also address the needs because we know that women veterans uh, undergo uh, certain obstacles that men don't go through in the military and outside. So uh, they're working very hard uh, in association with uh, community-based military organizations to examine the needs of women veterans so we can address them uh, in a greater way. And the state is also involved. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you have any more questions uh, that, I, that I don't, uh, for something I don't answer today, you can always go to pgcmls.info uh, slash 2020.census, uh, uh, and that will take care of that part when I, when I mention the census, because it's very important that we do that. Uh, we, we don't want to keep losing money uh, because we don't fill out those forms. Very important. Uh, I think it's about eighteen thousand dollars, a little bit, little change for every person. And when we don't do that, uh, that affects our military community. It affects our families. It affects our health care, and and uh, so much more. Mm-hmm. So uh, please do that. What are some of the education benefits veterans may not be aware of? Well, you know, it's, it's when we think about vets and uh, and uh, education benefits, uh, we think about them using things like the GI Bill, and it, you know, this is a, that's a tough question to answer because it depends on what period you served in the military. So uh, there is no one answer that fits all categories. But what we do is when they come in, we find out what period they served, and then we do our research to make sure that we know exactly. Uh, uh, the benefits that they're available to pursue. Uh, if you're 100%, it's also good to know, 100% service disabled, uh, connected, then uh, you can also uh, uh, have benefits for your spouse. And we explain that to them as well. But uh, we take it on a case-by-case basis because we, we want to make sure we give out the right information. But we'd be happy to work with any veteran that has a question concerning their uh, education benefits. So the library also has resources like Brain Fuse. That- and I might add that Prince George's Community College has a, a, a veteran's office set up there that uh, if you're interested in, uh, in pursuing a degree there or, or the University of Maryland as well, then you can go to those two campuses and they have a uh, military uh, office that will help you navigate the system. Okay. A lot of questions I get from the from the youth is is uh, uh, where are the ROTC units when they graduate from from high school, and I'm happy to tell them that in Prince George's County, 
you have an Army ROTC at uh, Bowie State University. I have visited there many times, and uh, I can say they're they're one of the top ROTC uh, units that I've seen. Uh, they're given a lot of attention by military veterans who also go and visit with them, and uh, their uh, their programs are very well structured. Uh, I like, although I'm retired Air Force, <laughs> I like the uh, uh, for what I see at Bowie State. Also, the uh, University of Maryland has an ROTC program, so those are two programs. Uh, any youth that's thinking about joining the military may want to uh, look into. A veteran's calling me. Hold on one second. Put up the next question. Ooh, I'm coming on. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, sorry for the, the funky tech today. Um, Dr. Dula can't actually hear us, so we're having to feed the questions to him in the chat. Hence the sometimes uh, con conflicting uh, microphone feeds that you're hearing, but but we're making do. This is how, how it goes in the military too. I'm a, a former army guardsman. You make do. You've got a deadline. You got a role, and you you work with what you've got, and uh, it's all good because we're getting the information out there, which is the most important part. Nick, can you put up the um, the uh, sites for the library? Sure thing. Great feeds. Something. I have a cell phone here. I, I am not hesitant about giving out my cell number. And uh, and I get calls day and night, 24-7, 366 if it's leap year. And uh, oftentimes I'm asleep and a veteran calls me in distress. I am there for him. Why? Because the county executive appointed me to be the officer, the director for veteran affairs uh, uh, to help veterans. And even though I'm one myself, I bend over backward to make sure that everybody's taken care of. So uh, please know that I work very, very uh, uh, a lot <laughs> to, uh, to make sure that any question that comes up, any concern that comes up, I take care of it. We also work very closely with Employee Prince George's. I love Employee Prince George's because I do have uh, veterans coming in in greater number seeking employment. And as they come in, I'm happy to uh, refer them down to Employee Prince George's because if they go in and they say that I'm a veteran, guess what? They get a coach and go to the front of the line. And I think that our veterans deserve that. Oftentimes we forget that our veterans are, are, are coming home from Iraq. And if you've been keeping up with the news in Afghanistan, there's some things that I, I will not talk about here, but in person I will. Uh, at th but they're coming home from Afghanistan. They're coming home from Iraq. They're coming from isolated tours where they haven't been around anybody but a few military people for the last year. And they're coming home looking for jobs. And I think that we ought to bend over backward to make sure every veteran has an opportunity to pursue the job of their choice. And so that is uh, one of the biggest problems, not, not, not a problem, one of the biggest tasks we have. You ask what was one of the concerns of the community, that's it. And we bend over backward to work with, with uh, Employee Prince George's and, uh, and Mr. Swilly over there who does a great job and all the people. And also DLLR has an office where they serve veterans as well. As a parent of a young uh, Mac man, would you suggest the Air Force? Yes, with veterans, a hard time that the job. You know what? I, I went in Vietnam and, 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 and I volunteered for the Air Force during the height of Vietnam. And my mother cried for about a, about a year, I think. <laughs> but my dad was a World War II veteran who served in the Philippines and in the Pacific. Very dangerous uh, duty. And uh, when I said I wanted to go in the Air Force versus going to college, which I did have the opportunity, I uh, my dad said, are you sure? And I said, yes. So uh, I signed up the next day. I have no regrets. You know why? Because if I hadn't gone in the Air Force, I wouldn't be here talking to you now. Now, I've had the opportunity to be a college professor, a high school teacher, and also on the other opportunity, I've had other opportunities that many people would never have had the opportunity to experience. So I tell young people all the time, uh, if you don't have a job, if you're looking for something to do, if you're doing, uh, if you're trying to make up your mind between uh, finding a job or going in the military, I always recommend the Air Force because they do teach you skills that I that I was able to uh, uh, to use, and uh, they gave me every opportunity to go to college. So, yes, I would tell any young, uh, especially uh, any, it said any young black man, most certainly, 
because there's lots of opportunity there. And if you haven't heard, there's now the new Space Command, and there's many new opportunities there as well. I hear they're going to be called the Space Command Deltas. But, uh, but uh, there's many opportunities and from computer resources to health care to uh, everything the civilian community offers. And so, yes, I would do that. Now, I've talked a little bit too much about the Air Force. I'm not a recruiter, but, uh, but it was a great way of life for me and my family. So my next question Someone is... Someone said their dad was a World War II veteran. Mm -hmm. And uh, my father graduated from high school and went straight in the Navy during World War II. And uh, if your dad is, is like my dad, they didn't talk much about where they went, what they did, and how they served. But we know it was rough duty. Being a black man in the, in the uh, Navy, like my father was in the Army, or landing on Omaha Beach at Norm during D-Day, was not, not easy. And oftentimes when we think of World War II veterans, we just think of them getting old. Well, guess what? Many of them served heroically. And uh, there are heroes. And uh, they don't talk about it, but just know that the greatest generation paved the way for us to be where we're at today. And uh, I wish my dad was still alive so I could hug him or at least give him an air hug and let him know that uh, uh, I really appreciated him for who he was and for, uh, for serving the country. And also I have a program too. Uh, here, here, here's what uh, one of the listeners may want to know. Uh, right before the uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, hit and we had to go out, I, was, uh, I just created a program where uh, any, any, any parent that has a student that is considering going into the military, we will connect them with someone like myself who has served in the military honorably so that they can answer all the questions they want to ask and we'll answer them for them in, honest, in an honest fashion. So uh, anyone that has a son or daughter wishing to go in the military, just please, please uh, send them my way, and I'll be glad to talk with them and you uh, uh, at any time. Our state is, you know what, I think we have one of the best uh, secretaries uh, of Veteran Affairs in the United States, period. Secretary Owens and I go back to when I was the uh, DCAO for Health and Human Services in a previous administration. Uh, during that time, I created a small office called Veteran Affairs. That was in 2005. It wasn't a big deal. It was just a phone number and a, a, a military dependent where people could call in and say, how do I get county resources from family services, social services, uh, aging department, or home, or health department? Where can I get help? And uh, I think uh, uh, Secretary Owens was there at the time. He liked what I did and sent down a state person to work with us. Well, today we have a state office over in the Harriet Hunter building under uh, where uh, Family Services is located on the corner of Brinkley Road and Allentown Road. And uh, we also have my office in the county administration building. So uh, uh, what we do is we work together to make sure that we answer all the questions and help all the veterans the best we can. Uh, the state supports us. Uh, all I have to do is call Secretary Owens and say, uh, would you broadcast this for us or can, we, can, uh, can you help us in this area? And uh, so we have moved forward together with enormous uh, uh, meetings. And uh, as a result, we ended up with things like the Women's Veterans Initiative. Uh, we ended up with uh, collaboratives throughout the state of Maryland. And, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, I think that when we go back, we're going to try to find out where some of the other resources are the, the green resources and and try to uh, find out how we can pursue more funding from uh, from the state for our veteran affairs office which again houses the largest concentration of veterans in the state of maryland but the state is very he uh, helpful and thank god we have uh, secretary owens at uh, at the helm there we don't mind being a mentor we love being mentors uh i am air force uh my uh, uh program director is air force we have a coordinator that's Navy, and uh, we have uh, a new person that's going to be coming on board hopefully soon, and he is Army. I'm trying to keep it a, a, a ride uh, spectrum of all the military uh, offices and uh, so that we can work together and move forward together and do stuff together that's going to affect our community in a greater way. So uh, uh, we, uh, we believe in jointness. You always hear me talk about jointness. 
uh, joined us when I was in uh, the Air Force Task Force Commander in South America. Uh, we, we worked jointly. Uh, we had Army, Air Force, Navy, Marine, and Coast Guard all working together to, to perform the mission, and it worked superbly. So when I came to civilian life, I said, okay, everybody learned the word jointness, but when you type in the word jointness on the computer, it's redlined. But, uh, but we're going to turn that red line green here in Prince George's County because uh, we all must work together to accomplish the mission and be here for those military men and women transitioning back to our community uh, with, with, their, uh, with their stresses, with their concerns, and uh, looking forward to carve out a great life here in the uh, crown jewel of Prince George's. And I love that word, the crown jewel. You'll often hear me say the veterans are the diamonds of, in the crown jewel. And on my letterhead, I put diamonds, uh, uh, five diamonds, Army, Air Force, Navy, Marine, and Coast Guard. That's what those five diamonds uh, mean. So, uh, so we're trying to do things that's going to bolster, bolster morale and, uh, and, uh, and help our people in a more, uh, in, in a more beneficial way. You know, we've had some very, very uh, great talented people come through our office uh, from all branches. But I think that we have got to get more of the word out to our uh, reservists and our guard members uh, concerning their veteran status. Uh, oftentimes, uh, you will hear a person say, well, I'm not a veteran, but I was, I was in the guard or I was in the reserves. Uh, the way that works is uh, you, if you have spent a certain amount of time on duty, then you may qualify to be uh, known as a veteran. Uh, and, uh, and so I don't, I don't quite have all the matters worked out today, but this is something that came up from the conference that I was at last week, Zoom conference. Uh, so if you could <laughs> talk to uh, County Executive Alsobrook, don't, don't tell her Doc went to a conference last week and uh, did he wear his mask. But uh, it was a Zoom conference, and they said those are, that's one of the areas that we have to look at to make sure that the reservists and the Guard uh, know their status and help them navigate the system so that they can uh, be classified the, uh, uh, as uh, in the care areas that they can be where veterans are concerned. Uh, so we're getting there. We're, 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 we don't have all the answers yet, but we're getting there. The first year... Uh, we were so busy with our uh, HELP program, H-E-L-P. Mm -hmm. uh, I created that so that we'd cover all areas of our veteran community. And uh, the H stands for uh, health and homelessness because those are two big areas. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately, we have been working with organizations in our county that when a homeless person comes in, we can call that uh, uh, home share or that, uh, or that organization, and we place them uh, immediately, uh, if they if their assessment is uh, done, uh, if their intake is done successfully, but uh, we need we don't leave veterans out on the street. We may not have a huge building that houses everybody, but our community partners have come together to say, I have room, I have a house. Like Educare Resource Center has a home share with two facilities, Knoxon Hill and Fort Washington, and uh, right to this date we haven't left veterans on the street. Uh, also, U.S. Vets has a place. Uh, the uh, I, I hate to say this, I, I don't know if they still call it this, but Old Soldier's Home has uh, has uh, rooms available now. And so uh, all you have to do is apply, and if you fit the requirements, you get to go in there. Uh, e is for employment and education. So a veteran comes in, they need help. Under E, employment and education. Under L, okay, I'm back. Under L, we look at labor and training. Because we understand that you might want to be a plumber, you won't, might want to be in construction, you might want to be in computer engineering, uh, and there's training uh, and internships available to do that. And on the other side of the coin, uh, P is for people. Uh, people, and I like to say people and the quality of life. So when you come to our office, the first thing we're going to do is give you uh, an outstanding quality service because you deserve it. Uh, also, uh, people have other issues that may not fit uh, one of the criteria that I just mentioned under the HELP program, and uh, we will bend over backward to address them. I had a, a, a guy come in, veteran, that says, uh, I lost my driver's license, and the state doesn't want to give them back to me. We got busy and said, this guy's a veteran. What can I do to make a difference? And within uh, three days, he had his driver's license back. So I, I, I didn't get a check from DMV, but uh, we were able to make, have another satisfied customer. 
So uh, you come in, we're going to address it. Mental health is one of the issues uh, because we work with uh, Interdynamics, uh, who will take a veteran in. If they don't have insurance, they'll help them do their Medicaid paperwork and put them right through their behavior, behavioral health program. So, And there's other organizations out there like that. HUD is also a big, uh, a, a, a big factor. We work with them closely. They've been to my office. We sat down together and we talked about things like the VASH program for temporary uh, vouchers and how we can move forward together. And we talked to housing. I uh, thank God we got a lady down there by the name of uh, Nicole Garrett, who uh, I can always call and get the right answers. So uh, we have an extensive partnership program that uh, has, 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 has long tentacles. And uh, we have uh, probably right in Prince George's County by itself, 100 partners from the interfaith community to the, to the uh, uh, mental health community, to the home share community, uh, and uh, and uh, those that fill out, help you fill out your paperwork to get in-home care. We are very fortunate to have caring people in Prince George's County. And right here in the Crown Jewel, I'll say that again, where our veterans are the diamonds of the Crown Jewel, we are happy to, to, to extend and bend over backward every effort we have to assist our veterans and their families. And we do have family members coming in as well. Wounded Warriors, I've been in contact with them. You know, everybody can't... Uh, I sit at a table at the same time, but yes, I do know what Wounded Warriors is, and I've called them. We've had great dialogue, just like I've called uh, Casa Prince George's and where we're helping with the homeless kids and the foster care kids and looking for partners to, to work with us that would be able to be court advocates and go into the court system and work with our children. Uh, all these programs are, are, are programs that come together. We all gather around a table. Well, we did gather around a table, uh, and hopefully we'll have a big Zoom conference real soon to get them back uh, and uh, and uh, be able to help each other move forward together. But yes, we do work with HUD. We do work with Wounded Warriors. Uh, and uh, and we do realize the importance of, of partners. That's the first thing I'd done in February 2019 when I uh, uh, came to this, uh, was appointed to this position. I called a partnership meeting. And we had 40 people to show up. I'm just so happy that Prince George's County sees the need and will bend over backward to work together to make sure that need is satisfied. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. Related. Yep, we are Prince George's proud. You know, and I have a saying, let me see if I can remember. Veterans are proud to be Prince George's proud. And they, these things that I'm saying, I'm not just saying them because I'm a good looking guy. <laughs> I, I'm saying them because as a major and a, a retired Air Force major and a commander in the Air Force, I came up with a lot of things that helped our, our, our raised morale. And uh, many times, they were not just raising morale, but they were impacting. So that's why I feel that uh, with, with these slogans that I create, like veterans are proud to be, Prince George is proud, and the diamonds and the crown jewel. It, 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 it says to our veterans, you're more than a veteran in Prince George's County. And if you've ever heard County Executive also Brooks speak out on the trail, then you know that her passion is with uh, with the people, and that those people include our veterans community. Thank God she had, she uh, she uh, extended the efforts of this office to our veteran community, and we're just so very happy to be the diamonds and the crown jewel. If you want to contact me, uh, probably the best way doing uh, doing this time is uh, through my email at j a. Dula, D-U-L-A. Don't forget the A. J-A Dula, D-U-L-A at C-O dot P-G dot M-D dot U-S. That's J-A Dula at C-O dot P-G dot M-D dot U-S. And, uh, and I will be glad to answer your, uh, your, your uh, query within, uh, within 24 hours. I don't go to, to bed at night until I've answered all my emails. Sometimes it's hundreds of emails, uh, but uh, that's why I've got to go take my sleep apnea test this month. Uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, that's uh, that's very important to me. Quality customer service. I didn't mention that I created the first total quality management program for the Air Force when I was uh, the executive officer for the Air Force District of Washington. Uh, the general called a four star called my general and said, "Hey, can you do this?" He said, "We certainly can." And he looked at me and said, hey, captain, I think I was a captain at the time, can you create a total quality management program because the chief of staff of the Air Force wants us to do it? 
And I didn't know what it was, so I went and found a chief master sergeant, and I said, do you know what this is? He said, I took a course at the University of Maryland, and I created the Total Quality Management Program. And then later on, it uh, caught, along, caught on Air Force Wide. So uh, uh, I, I guess I was a trailblazer in that area, and I still try to be the best quality customer service provider that I can and also make sure that the quality customer service principles are used in my office. So anytime you call, we're going to be there to assist you. You know, patriotism to me is very important. Oftentimes when I send out my emails, I say veterans and patriots because this is the only country I know. Anybody that tells me to go back home, I, I, I let them know I left North Carolina in 1997. I have no uh, desire to return because Washington, D.C. area is my home now. Prince George's County is my home. I love being here. I love the people. And uh, I, as the 4th of July comes up, I look at all the great things we have. You know, I've traveled the world many times. I have been to places where the only school had four uh, poles and a, and a, and a grass uh, top on it. Kids walk five and six and seven miles every day to get to that school. And through that school, they produce nurses and doctors and teachers. And coming to Prince George's County, I taught in the school system for five years at Crossland High School. And I was very happy to do that. People said, why would you do that when you can go back and be a SES general equivalent? And I said, because I want to share my experiences with the children. I have been over backward to share with the children. And in doing so, I have made sure that I shared uh, not only my experiences, but my beliefs. And my belief is that uh, patriotism is very important and that we know our history so we'll be even more uh, knowledgeable uh, about our country, our culture, and, uh, and, our, and, uh, and our communities. So, uh, so yes, to me, patriotism is realizing that uh, we do have faults in our country, but I still feel it's the best country on earth. And uh, if you've traveled and seen some of the things that I have, I'm sure you would be, f be feeling the same way. I just put out a, a letter, uh, I think it was yesterday, and it was to our veterans and patriots on the 4th of July holiday. Uh, I have heard many comments about 4th of July. So in my letter, I said, let us not forget Christmas addicts and the shot heard round the world that began the American Revolution. It was the two separate things because the shot round the world was 1775 and uh, the shot heard round the world for Christmas addicts was, was the first person killed, African American. And I also said that we as a, as a, as a people uh, should... Uh, uh, should 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 enjoy that day, but to be very safe. Wear a mask, wash hands, keep distance, but uh, enjoy the Fourth of July, because uh, you know that is when America uh, uh, created the Declaration of Independence and broke from Great Britain. So uh, no matter what your belief is, uh, like I said, we're one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Now, we may question that in today's times, and I'll have that conversation with some of you at another time. But at the same time, we have the right to question that. We have a right to demonstrate. And one of the things we always said in the military, and I say it today, I may not always agree with what you say, but I will die for your right to say it. You. you know, just like I said, I may not agree with you every time uh, on what you say, but I'll die for you right to say it. But it is your patriotic duty that if you see something wrong, then you stand up for it. That is why we have great people in our history like Harriet Tubman, A. Philip Randolph, Frederick Douglass, Martin Luther King, and all the others that stood up so that we could change America for the better. So to me, that is a patriotic duty. Many people don't know. During my time uh, in Southeast Asia during Vietnam, I led a march, a march of about 100 African Americans. Now, I could have been court-martialed for it, but that didn't stop me because I saw something that was wrong. And at that time, we didn't have barbers. They didn't know how to cut our hair when, they, when we did have them, their hair. 
Uh, and there are some other things going on in the 1960s that we just didn't like. So, so we are two or three of us organized a march, and uh, we brought it to the attention of the leadership. I understand that reached all the way up to the Pentagon. That was in 1972. So, uh, where some may have called me a rebellious person, remember I'm a child of the 60s. I marched, I sat in, I had my own opinions, but that was my patriotic duty to stand up for the shortfalls that I saw in America so that we could make it better. And that's why I applaud our kids today, that if they perceive something to be wrong, then stand up for it like the children of the 60s did and correct what you what you perceive to not be right in our great country. And that is a, a constitutional right to do that. Dr. Dula, we so appreciate your service. I look forward to coming back. There's a lot of other things that, that I know that we want to talk about, but I think our Prince George's County Library, Memorial Library system, for all they do, they always have great displays. They're always uh, uh, encouraging people to come and use our library branches, and I do too. So thank you very much uh, for having us, and uh, let's stay connected. And remember, on the 4th of July, it is your, uh, your it is your your right to enjoy that day, but please be safe. Okay, let's follow the lead of our county executive and uh, close uh, wear our mask, wash our hands. God bless you. God bless America. Thank you, sir. Bye bye. See you again. Well, Doctor Duel is awesome. Thank you, Roberta, for interviewing him. Absolutely. Yeah. We're gonna have to have an interview without being able to hear yeah. each other, but it went yeah. pretty well. So thanks yeah. for having. And he was expecting only to be on for 30 minutes, too, and he, he hung in there, which is great. Yeah, he did, absolutely. So will you go ahead and put up the um, Brain Fuse Vet Now, which are resources designed to help veterans navigate the Department of Veterans Affairs, prepare for college, and brush up on job skills. Um, in addition, under Learning Express Library, there is the ability to practice the ASVAB tests and tutorials for folks considering military service. So we'll show you the navigation here. You go to our website, pgcmls.info. Then you can navigate to online library. You click on this link here, and then you go to online resources. And uh, there are a bunch of different ways to access things. You can search alphabetically by category. What I like to do is I just do Control F uh, if you're on a PC, or uh, Apple F if you're on a, a Mac. And you could type in um, brain fuse. You'll hear that there are a bunch of brain products. Um, and Roberta just mentioned brain fuse vet. Uh, we'll click through to show you. Oop, that needs my library card number, so I won't do that. But um, brain fuse vet now is amazing, amazing, amazing. It is literally on demand access to a veterans affairs expert like Dr. Dula. Uh, if you're not able to reach to the county, for example, you come here through the library and get free access to um, all kinds of resources uh, on how to get your benefits, how to fix your benefits how to apply for benefits, find out your veteran status. Um, veteran status is a really huge deal. Um, right now in times of uh, economic challenge, um, it's really important to note that a lot of organizations have veterans preferences for their hiring. Um, if you're applying for a federal job, a local government job or a state job, depending on your veteran status, um, which can differ as Dr. Dula said, if you're a Vietnam veteran versus a global war and terrorism veteran or just uh, someone who hasn't served overseas, there's there can be some differences. Um, but you actually get extra points on your job applications for that military service, which is a tremendous big deal. Um, and in some cases in the military or in civilian federal jobs, um, there is a preference for uh, people with military background in addition to those point systems. So check that out. Um, I'll show you the other one, Learning Express Library that Roberta mentioned. Um, Learning Express Library has an, a lot of amazing resources. Um, it is basically your one-stop shop for everything in terms of test prep, whether you are in fifth grade or trying to go into the military. And um, the ASVAB, which uh, Roberta mentioned, is the aptitude test that everyone who is trying to join the military has to take. And your score on that test will determine what types of jobs you're eligible for. So if you're someone who wants to, for example, go into special forces, you have to score really high on that ASVAB. It's an aptitude test, math, all kinds of things like that. Um, it's really worth investing some time in preparing for those tests because your earning potential in the military 
is oftentimes based on that initial assessment. Um, for example, if you want to go RTC, you're still going to have to do that as well. Um, so check that out. And this is a resource for you to take one of those tests um, in advance without um, having to pay for it. And you can get some coaching as well, which is really cool. I had to do the ASVAB test back in the day when I was in the, the going into the Army National Guard and um, had a, you know the, my pick of jobs, but ended up going the musician route. Um, but it, this is a huge resource that you might not realize is available through the library. And then if you're thinking about college or graduate school, um, we've got practice GRE tests. We've got practice SATs, ACTs, PSAT, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, even the TOEFL exams, which I haven't quite figured out what those are, but I know they're a thing, um, which is the, the English language equivalency thing. But um, they're there for you. I'll, I'll shush now and let Roberta continue. All right. I just wanted to thank Nick. Um, and again, Dr. Dula, I hope everyone has a really safe 4th of July weekend. Um, like Dr. Dula mentioned, please follow the protocol, wear your mask, wash your hands, and social distance. And we will see you back here next Thursday. Have a great night. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Roberta.